serious, what are some ways one can stop unwanted what if anxiety inducing thoughts from spinning in their head? My therapist told me to start replacing what if with when so that I would a. Understand which scenarios were not as plausible real issues b. Take the anxiety off my current self and put it toward developing productive solutions. For example. Instead of what if my friend is mad at me and worrying about the problems it would potentially cause me. I'd go when my friend is mad at me. I will do x. y. z to resolve it and stop worrying about it now bc it's not in my present. It's basically the equivalent of going I'll cross that bridge when I got to it but for some reason it really helps me with the spiraling. My dad always said there's no reason to worry until you have a reason to worry. When found out my mom might have cancer. He said that we don't know what she has. When we find out whether or not she has cancer. Then we know what to think about. There's no reason to go there yet. BTW. It was cancer. She did a bunch of treatment. Had surgery. And fully recovered. She's now cancer free. Meditation. It's a life changer. The idea isn't to stop those thoughts. Because stopping a thought is like trying to stop the wind. The idea is to allow the thoughts. Like the wind. To pass on by. Noticed. Acknowledged. And then passed. Hope that helps. I was thinking along the same line with establishing presence for situations that are especially anxiety inducing. Focus on feeling the inside of your body. Listen to the environment surrounding you, it helps you to bring yourself back to the present and apply mindfulness and meditation practices to learn more about why you're feeling thinking the way you are versus entertain the what if questions. When I was 14 or so. I started distracting myself from unpleasant thoughts by playing what if scenarios in my head with absurdly good outcomes. Many of these turned into superhero daydreams. But it worked. I still do similar stuff now. My brain asks. What if a violent criminal breaks into my house? I remind myself of existing security measures, locks, cameras, lights, and then imagine myself easily defeating that criminal by knocking him out and or trapping him in a closet. I know both the terrible and amazing outcomes are unlikely. But focusing on the good one allows me to relax. My big problem is catastrophizing. I always take what ifs to the worst possible outcomes. Drive over a pothole? Maybe it was actually a small child who you didn't see. Dog barks at something through the front window at night? Someone is probably trying to break in. Once my therapist helped me name this thought pattern and taught me how to talk myself down. I have been much better. But that took therapy and medication. I recommend talking to your PCP and seeing if those are good options. I resorted to a rather odd coping mechanism. Every day when I go to work I get a piece of celery. Draw a smiley face on it. And put it in my shirt pocket next to my pens. I tell myself he's gonna be my little wingman and he's gonna absorb all of the bad vibes and anxiety. Then at the end of the day. He gets eaten and with him goes the anxiety. This may come as a bit of a surprise but that's actually witchcraft. You're setting an intention, having the little dude absorbs your anxiety in the bad energy, and then dispelling it once it's served its purpose and turning it into a positive. And making it work in your favor, eating the celery and getting the nutrients and shiz. I'm a beginner practitioner so I'm no expert but I figured I could share a little tidbit. Hope you found it interesting. Like before you go to bed or middle of the day? Here's what I do for both. I tell myself that. The next 10 breaths are mine. I then make a fist but with my index finger resting on my thumbnail. Try it. Feels weird. Very distracting. Leave it there. Count the inhale as one and then the exhale as one. Think about that thumb the whole time. Nothing else. I tell myself. Think about the thumb every time an intrusive thought blossoms. 10 breaths. No exceptions. It works. Sometimes it doesn't work. And sometimes I forget about it entirely and suffer. Good luck. Honestly. When I have invasive thoughts that trigger anxiety I straight up sub something like hey man. I don't know if that's the most helpful thing you can do right now. How about we try? 
subconsciously advising myself as though my unconscious anxious self were a friend who's having a hard time seems to really help. I wish it was more socially acceptable to talk to yourself. I do a lot of talking to cope and think through things in my life. And I've had people point it out and comment that it's odd. But it's just how I function. Sometimes talking to yourself just helps. This isn't scientific or proven useful by stats. But every time my anxiety kicks in and I start thinking about all of the what ifs. I take a few deep breaths. And tell myself that things will work out the way that they were meant to. If I'm meant to embarrass myself or slip up when giving a speech or fall as I go to shake hands with someone. Then I guess there must be a reason that I'll discover in the future as to why I did so. I don't know. Maybe it won't work for some people. But it calms my nerves and relaxes my brain enough to let me sleep through the night. And I think trying it is worth a shot. I started running. I love it. I push myself to exhaustion then when I go to bed I'm tired and fall asleep faster. It's meditation and exercise for me. That and stoic philosophy have really helped. This is going to sound nuts but hear me out. Remember that episode of Spongebob where Squidward is in an endless white room? I consciously visualize that room, which is supposed to represent my mind. And then I visualize a ton of cute dogs running around and driving away my unwanted thoughts. Once they're gone, the dogs arrange into a large circle and trot around the circle, following each other in a big conga line. I focus on the dogs for a few moments and just breathe. Kind of meditating. If the thoughts start to come back into my head, the dogs drive them away again and return to the circle. The first time I met with a therapist she pointed out how many should statements I was making. And then she asked me to tell me what I really have done. Not what I think should or could happen. Shoals and what ifs kill my motivation. Self esteem and energy. And whenever I remember to knock out shoals it helps. Occupy yourself with an activity over which you have control. Like a puzzle. Or even a video game. Drawing is sometimes good. Stimulate your brain in a different way. I guess is what I mean. I've found that the old game 2048 is really useful in this sense. There are plenty of other options obviously. But that one has worked for me. I try to change the what ifs to something so positive and amazing. Knowing it'll never happen. But it keeps the shitty what ifs at bay. Example. What if I mess up this account and we lose the business and I get fired and my company goes bankrupt because of my mistake? Changes too. What if I make this account my B option kicks so much ass that I get a 150k dollars bonus and the company gives me a plaque and then I win the lottery and there is a parade in my honor. Totally ridiculous. But it works to prove to myself that the bad what ifs are just as unlikely. Breathing exercises. Anxiety meds. Prayer. Not for everyone. But I find that it helps immensely. Philippians 4. 6. 7 says to pray with supplication and thanksgiving. That is. Thanks for the good things that you have. And asking for assistance with what you need. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding comes on you. It protects you from the trauma while the anxiety passes. Consider a totally different time frame or scenario from your current what if worry. So if you're preoccupied by something that is happening this week. Start thinking of a completely benign thing about the next season. For example. Performance review at work this week. So what? It'll be apple cider time at the park in 3 months. What if you take your niece and nephew to go that weekend? This works long term too. Worried about something longer term. Like your job or your degree? Met? What if 5 years from now you publish your own book? Wouldn't that be cool? Or what if you start learning a language today? 5 years from now you would be fluent. This doesn't work for everyone. But I stop myself and think of my favorite TV show or movie at the moment and think of a funny part. I really enjoy watching bloopers and realizing that not everyone's perfect. And we should enjoy every moment we're given. This doesn't really confront the what if questions but it helps my mind change the subject. Close bracket. Find something to focus on. A cold. 
Damp rag is a great way to start. Hold it. Think about the dampness. The coldness. The texture of the rag. Think about the rag and nothing else. When you think about your worries. Think about the rag. Don't get mad that you thought about something else. Just kindly bring your attention back to the rag. You will find you lose track of what you were worried about if you can genuinely lose yourself in this. Being able to do this without an item in your hands is essentially what meditation is. But an item that hits a number of your senses is a great place to start. Switch to constructive worrying. If the worry is what if this event is going to give me anxiety? Flip it. What if I'll be fine? Dot. What if I do this thing wrong? Flip it. What if I do it right? Double quote. Mindfulness mediation. Which emphasizes focusing on the now. There's a book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle that you might want to check out. I take a hot shower then I cross stitch and drink tea. Chamomile is natural relaxer and cross stitching is so relaxing and takes so much concentration. May not be for everyone but it's always worth a shot. CBT. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And it's relatively easy to train yourself on. I use the app Thought Diary. It helps me identify what I'm worrying about and disengage from the cycle while also coming up with potential plans of action. Music. Laughter. Watch whatever makes you laugh. It helps. Fall asleep with the TV on. Whatever show you can zone out to. These are simple things and don't always work. Sure. But they provide quick distractions. Source. I'm anxious. Also a therapist. Focus on your body when you have these thoughts. And pay attention to how you feel. Maybe you get a knot in your chest. Or maybe you feel tension in your neck or head. Focus your full attention on how you feel physically. If you find nothing to keep your attention. Focus on your breathing. Let your exhale take longer than your inhale. Your mind will wander back to thoughts that are troubling you. Each time it does. Gently guide it back to your area of focus. This will likely feel uncomfortable. You're forcing yourself to confront the bad feeling inside your body. But the point is that it's your mind that makes things a million times worse. The bad feeling is just a feeling. It doesn't have words. It can't ask what if. Long term. Meditation. It doesn't exactly get rid of the thoughts. But it takes away their potency and power over you. Short term. Try the 4, 7, 8 technique. Breathe in. Counting to 4. Hold your breath. Counting to 7. Breathe out. Counting to 8. Repeat. And try to focus as much as you can on the counting. Also helps with falling asleep a little more quickly when I'm having an anxious night. Accept the fact the world is unpredictable. Good things happen as much as bad things. Your fear of the unknown isn't a fear of the unknown but thinking that you can't handle whatever comes at you. I'm not great at ignoring the what ifs. It's so hard. But occasionally I can literally talk myself through. Like repeating over and over. You just need to get through this. Or just get what you need. Or just let go. It doesn't always work and I don't know if it quite makes sense. But I'm basically giving myself repeat directions. I literally turn on a how it's made video. It's a start to finish. Repetitive mechanical motion based video. Boring as hell. But interesting. It breaks my cycles for some reason in less than 5 minutes. Of the 5. 4. 3. 2. 1 method of what's in the room help too. If I get stuck in a panic spiral I try to get myself to a faucet and splash cold water on my face or press a cold drink against my forehead to interrupt the thought processes. Then remind myself to breathe and that I've gotten through a scarier shitty than whatever the what if is telling me. If I haven't been through something scarier. I tell myself that I thought so many other things in my life were insurmountable and I still got through them. Then it's just about changing the wording about thoughts once I've calmed down enough to be able to think at least a bit more clearly. And other people have posted how to do that better than I can explain. The book Unfuck Your Brain talks about using a hair tie around your wrist to pop it against the skin whenever you start to have those thoughts creep in. 
Holding ice cubes over a sink in your hand also works. The idea is to take your mind off of those negative thoughts by causing your mind to focus on an inconvenient pain without bringing actual physical harm to you. I have a friend with a similar type of what if anxiety. And if either of us are experiencing it, we'll run it by the other to get an opinion from someone not emotionally involved in the thought but also knows enough about that kind of anxiety to know how to tell you it's not something to worry about without explicitly saying it's not something to worry about. I suffer from general anxiety disorder and bouts of harm OCD. I talk directly to the thought and acknowledge its existence. Then I either say something along the lines of so what? I already heard you the first 2000 times. Why would this time be any different than the last 1999 times? Or I will say to the thought you don't have any effect on me. You haven't in the past. You won't in the future. Double quote. I've also tried treating it like a pop-up ad. You don't want to click on a pop-up ad. So why would you accept these thoughts into your mind? It's spam. So notice it's there. But click the X. Socratic questions. One that I've derived from this and helps me is to ask myself is this something I genuinely need to confront can take action on right now or am I just worrying out of habit? Double quote. I tend to beat a worn path in my mind over the same worries that tie back to my biggest fears and securities. Figuring out why I'm worrying about something often helps me dismiss it as a manifestation of one of those things I worry about habitually. I admittedly don't have anxiety like that often but whenever I start asking myself three questions. Will anyone die if this happens? Will I end up homeless if this happens? Does my life drastically change if this happens? If neither of those things can occur, find something better to worry about. We are gifted with this incredible imagination and we need to understand worry and anxiety as the abuse of the imagination. When we feel overcome with those what if thoughts we need to stop and pay attention to our breathing. And we need to remind ourselves that neuroses is when we allow the past or the future to infect the present.